my European trip still in Paris so today it's a weird day I got back late last night because I was gonna go to the catacombs this morning but I was really tired so I was like ah I'll do it Monday and then one of the girls I'd met who wasn't being in the catacombs with was like texting me and I like saw it but kind of like I was like half asleep and then she was like I couldn't actually get tickets online so she's like I can't go today and so I looked online and yeah you can't even get tickets till, like Tuesday and they're closed on Monday so the place that I did the walking tour with and I bought my loot ticket and the Versailles tour I was selling tickets for the catacombs so I'm gonna see now if I can go over and get a catacomb ticket from them and then see if I can go over today because even if it takes a while because I heard the line's supposed to be really long they're open to like I think 7 30 says the last time you can go in it's like well 1 30 I can't imagine the line is five hours and I can always like do the Louvre on Monday because the Louvre was closed on Tuesday, so I could do the Louvre early in the morning. Because Monday I need to be leaving to go to Bordeaux if I want to be able to. And I really, really do want to be able to go to Bordeaux. That is the plan. Catacombs, if I have time after the Louvre, because it is open till 10 p.m. tonight. So hopefully I would like to do the catacombs and the Louvre, but if not, that's okay. So I just stopped and got a crate for breakfast. This one is egg and cheese, so a savory one. And heading over to see about getting a ticket for the catacombs. This is so cool. There is a whole band in the vendor to get in, finally getting in, and it started raining really hard, luckily I have my umbrella, but it's still like the lower half of my body with, especially my feet. But I'm finally inside and I did get a little audio guide. So just walking through the catacombs right now. So, so far, it's just a bunch of rocks. <laughs> Like, isn't there supposed to be like skulls and I kind of see like human remains, but all I see so far are just rocks. Finally got to where all the skulls and bones and remains of people are and they're everywhere. Look at that. It's so crazy. It's a heart made out of skulls. Like, that's pretty darn crazy. That's really creepy. <laughs> I just touched a human skull. And a femur bone. This is weird. <laughs> Whoa, and over here, it's like, it's like all the bones and all the skulls lined up really neat. I wonder how many, whoa, this is like just all on top. Like it almost looks fake. There's just so many. Whoa, obviously water's leaking here because these all have mold on them bright green. So down in the Paris catacombs, there are six million people buried down here. Six million. That, that is insane. to make sure you didn't steal any bones. <laughs> but that was super cool experience. So happy I got to do it, even if I meant waiting an hour and a half from the rain. I didn't realize quite how far I walked underground, how much area I covered. I thought it was really short, but I have to walk a good bit back to get back to the metro, which is right across the street. It feels like a lot less when you're walking down there, you know? It's so funny how fancy the loo. Metro stop is versus all the other ones. Like, nice statues. Really nice chairs and walls. It's just like how fancy it is. Okay, so 
just had a quick panini while I was walking over to the Louvre. Oh, I can't believe it's right here. And here's the inside of the pyramid. Okay, so now where's the little tiny here that's underneath where the bones of Mary Magdalene is buried from National Treasure? Wait, I'm sorry, not National Treasure. Wrong movie. <laughs> I meant the Da Vinci Code. Inside of the Louvre, heading over to the Italian Renaissance area. I'm not gonna go look at the Mona Lisa right away because I would just like to sit down. My legs hurt from walking all around to find, hopefully, some paintings with a bench in front of it. Look at those for a bit. Lots of very cool sculptures in here. Lots of big frescoes on the ceiling. This room is really cool. It has a really cool ceiling. And it's like Roman architecture with lots of little sculptures. Hey, there's a rooster. These are all pocket watches. Some pretty huge ones. I can't imagine carrying those in my pocket. So these are in Napoleon III's apartment. This is more my style, bright and airy, beautiful. Wow, now this is a room, this is the Grand Salon, it says. Wow, it is so detailed, all the gold. Wow, this is super elaborate. Even those curtains, beautiful. I think they're made out of the same, they have the same design is the uh, cushions. Well, it's a lot of guests uh, for a dinner party. Must be at least 30 chairs here. Now, this is a bed made for a princess. Very fancy. Or maybe it'd even be a crib, I'm not sure. There's some really cool urns in here, very big urns. The one's made out of marble. Polished marble. I think it's marble. I'm actually not too sure. These were trays that were painted in the 1700s. I think they're really cool. It's it's almost like a drawing more than a painting with how detailed. I love vintage globes. I think they are so cool. And look at this one. This one is super cool. It has a clock on top too. These were the rooms of Marie Antoinette. She lived at Versailles, but they were made up her rooms here. So that's really cool. Cool looking area. It's like some like what are like sarcophaguses. These are cool. These are pretty cool. Made out of like different colored stones. I like it, it's pretty cool. Well, that's a pretty dirty st <laughs> statue. She looks so uncaring, she's like, do you have to? Giant one over there. Oh my God, doesn't this look like Brienne of Tarth? Gwen, uh, uh, Gwendolyn Christie from Game of Thrones. And oh my god, over there's a Mona Lisa. Well, to build myself up, I'm gonna look around this whole room before I can look at the Mona Lisa. This is a pretty huge painting. Oh my god, I can't believe it's there. And there she is, the most famous painting in the whole world. The Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci. And I will say, it really does look like her eyes are following you when you move. I literally can't believe I'm looking at the Mona Lisa in person right now. This is so crazy. And you can't even get that close. I had to zoom in. Like, So there's this here. I have this little thing. And this big space. I do behind this. And there's about four feet between that and another, like three feet to the wall. So we're a good like 10 feet away from the action. 
fucking thing. Can't get any closer, but. There Yeah. Well, look at this room. It's like so big. It's another Da Vinci. This one's called Saint Jean Baptiste. And it's in French. Love it. It's another Leonardo. It's another Da Vinci. Another Da Vinci. This one called Portrait de Femme de la Belle Ferronière. I probably would have gotten audio that if they told me the plaques were all in French, not also English, which most museums I've been to been in the home language in English, so not the greatest. It's pretty cool that there are quite a few more Da Vinci paintings. There are, let's see, one, two, three, four, five additional. That's right, because the tour guide of the walking tour I did yesterday, she said that Leonardo da Vinci gifted six paintings to, I think it was Francis, was the king at the time. That was Francis da Vinci. And that came to be at the Louvre, which was the then um, residential palace for the royals. So that makes sense there are five over here, and then there's the Mona Lisa. Oh, I'm confused because I just saw paintings that I saw in Vienna that I loved. And they're here as well, but bigger. These ones, they're a series. It's the different seasons of the year. I think this is autumn. Winter, or yeah, spring. Well, the spring was not there. I don't remember seeing this one though, but I definitely saw this one. I definitely saw that one. I don't remember about that one or this one, but these two for sure. So I'm confused if the ones in Vienna were replicas or if he just painted more than one of them. I really like this one. It's all about love. The birds in love. Babies in love. These look like two girls. Looks like that girl's in love with the other one. And then there's Cupid up there shooting the arrow. And then these men spying on it. I didn't quite realize how ginormous the Louvre is. I know like a tour guide said it was huge, but like it is seriously like just so 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 big. Pretty impressive room with a grand staircase. Here's one of the other very famous paintings that I've definitely seen pictures of. It is by Eugene Delacroix. I love all the ceilings. They're so detailed and beautiful. The ceilings are paintings of their own. Just stunning. I've also learned now that I have a thing for ceilings, for beautiful ceilings. Mm. Just the architecture of the Louvre is amazing, and I'm sure that's because it actually used to be the royal residence. Michelangelo's Dying Slave, and this is another Michelangelo, but um, I don't know what the name of it is because it's in French. So this right here is the winged victory of Samothrace made in 190 BC in ancient Greece. It's the winged goddess Nike. But this is one of the other big thing that is housed here. What the Louvre looks like when it's closed. Starting to get night time, so they put the lights on. Make it look really nice. So I was at the Louvre for about three or so hours because they did start closing exhibits about 40 minutes before the official closing time. So just be aware you are coming to the Louvre even on day when they don't close at 10 and they actually close at 9.45. The exhibits close at 9.45, but like they don't actually close like the bathrooms and stuff until 10. So just be aware if you are coming, even if you can close at six, exhibits start closing about 40 minutes before they start slowly closing off exhibits. So just do be aware of that to not really plan on my last hour. 
But it was fine. I, I saw almost all of what I wanted to see. The Louvre at sunset. And it's, it's so crazy that sunset here isn't even until like 10 p.m. It's 10 p.m. and it's not even completely dark yet. It's like 10.30 by the time it's like actually dark, dark. So weird, but really nice because it gives you so much more daylight and time to do things. I love the signs for the metro and also it reminds me of, if any of you guys have seen the animated version of Madeline Lost in Paris, I don't know how well known a movie that is, but like they were very like truthful to how it looked because I remember seeing all of these signs like that animated in it because like she goes to the metro and she gets like lost and stuff and I just remember seeing those signs and so I didn't realize they looked like that because they're very cool and like medieval like whimsical looking you know not like the typical sign you think you see at um, a metro stop. I'm having dinner at a French restaurant now and over here is a this guy's birthday <laughs> and they all have sparklers. It's pretty cool. I just had a delicious dinner. I got like roasted chicken with vegetables and a sauce and it was really 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 good and you know it's gonna be a good place when the menu is not in English. <laughs> it was just French but I used like my Google Translate app to like take a picture of the menu and then like while the Google Translate app is not that good it at least would say like pork, duck, chicken, beef so I could at least like kind of be like okay this sounds good and then ask for more information about it instead of having to be like what's this, what's this, what's this, what's this, what's this on the menu and I decided to eat there because early when I passed by it seemed really popular uh, a lot of Parisian people there obviously and other way I could tell that it was a very good restaurant and not just good food but very popular was that there was someone there tonight celebrating their birthday with a big party. You know, go celebrate your birthday at a restaurant that is in good quality. Yeah, really good dinner. It's like 11.30 now and then I need to take a shower and I do have to be up really early, like 7.30 because the Versailles tour I'm doing tomorrow starts at 9. So I need to be up and out by like 8. 15-ish person. So yeah, gonna head back, shower, and then sleep. So that's gonna be it for today's vlog. Pretty cool day going to the catacombs in the Louvre. So I will see you guys tomorrow to go to Versailles. Bye!